Hello everyone, my name is Dane Fraze. I'm the oilseed crop specialist for Manitoba Agriculture and we'll be presenting the Prairie Canola Crop Report for my colleagues in Alberta, Saskatchewan and ourselves in Manitoba. I'm going to go over a few acreage statistics for the growing season as well as some of the growing conditions we faced across the prairies this year together with some fall weather, regrowth issues, unharvested crop and some cropping intentions for 2022. A very steady pattern emerged in terms of harvested acreage in fall. The bars uh, represent the number of acres harvested and we'll see that's very consistent year over year with a slight increase in 2021. However, the big change in this year is the uh, dramatic drop in yields. We're seeing a fairly substantial decline in the average yields for each province, Saskatchewan in yellow, Manitoba in green, and Alberta in blue dashed lines when compared to the five year running average of 41.6 bushels from 2016 to 2020. 2021 saw a wide open fall with warm weather. However, harvest was significantly delayed in many places due to uh, intense canola crop regrowth and late season rain. However, it was different than previous years where we had snow on swath canola and, and canola crop. Canola crop is now all safely in the bin. Yields were severely impacted by the drought experienced across the entire prairie region with yields well below the five year average of 41.6 bushels. Uh, to summarize a few production statistics, we put this table together here. Uh, might be a little bit hard to interpret, but uh, the total canola acres are sitting at about 22.3 million, split amongst Alberta, Saskatchewan and Manitoba in their normal distribution. But all three provinces saw increase in acreage, most noticeable in Alberta at a 14% year-over-year -year acreage increase. Uh, some canola profitability certain uncertainty early in 2021 led farmers to generally planting more canola since the economics penciled out a little bit better at that time than many other crops. Uh, canola commodity in, uh, price increase rise started uh, in late January of this year. The average yield was estimated to be uh, 27 and a half bushels which is down by nearly 34 percent from last year uh, compared to the five-year average. Average yields varied widely by district and province, Manitoba topping out at 32.6 bushel an acre, Alberta lower, and Saskatchewan having the lowest average at 21.2. An estimated 12.6 million tons of canola were produced in 2021 on the prairies, accounting for almost 99% of Canada's total canola production. This tonnage was reduced by 37%, from last year, largely due to drought effects uh, and from the five-year average of 20 million metric tons, part of the reason for the massive surge in commodity pricing beginning this past uh, winter. Uh, a lack of overwinter snowfall and precipitation accumulation led to an early, early start uh, to seeding across many parts of southern Alberta and much of Manitoba. Soils were relatively driest in the Red River Valley of the province, uh, of Manitoba that is, into the interlake, as well as parts of western Saskatchewan and east central Alberta. Dry cold soils prohibited germination and crops struggled to emerge as they were immediately set upon by flea beetles. Farmers did frequently note that uh, differences in insecticidal seed treatment uh, made an impact on flea beetle uh, feeding and crop survival. And together with cultural changes, managing seeding date and depth to encourage faster emergence and growth. Where canola was placed into dry soils or placed too deep, certainly struggled to emerge and had uh, more of an issue combating the flea beetle pressure later on. Canola was reseeded in higher numbers in 2021 compared to previous years, largely due to the slow start and stress from dry soils, as I mentioned, together with those flea beetles. Uh, late frost did not help, followed by an extreme heat wave in early June, which killed some sensitive canola right at emergence. So we're seeing about 244,000 acres of canola were reseeded in Manitoba. That's from canola to canola, with an additional 20,000 acres being reseeded to canola from other crops for a total of 266,000 acres reseeded. Saskatchewan has a slightly lower number at 123,000 acres canola were reseeded to canola crops without any data from Alberta this year. And in terms of variety acreage comparison, I only have the data from Manitoba to represent. However, this is a fairly similar story across the other provinces, um, but we do tend to see more Roundup tolerant uh, canolas dominate or, or have increased market share further west. 
Glufosinate tolerant hybrids in Manitoba dominate our top 10 list uh, with two glyphosate tolerant lines at seventh and eighth place in terms of the number of acres grown and insured. Pod shatter lines or pod shatter resistant lines, tolerant lines, uh, hold nine of the top 10 spots and over 75% of the Manitoba canola market. Uh, similar trends exist in Saskatchewan, Alberta, but the exact data is unavailable with uh, SEIC and AFSC uh, still tabulating numbers right now. Clubroot resistant varieties now hold seven of the top 10 spots in Manitoba and have over 35% of the Manitoba market. So that's excellent to see that producers are adopting uh, clubroot resistant genetics proactively and ahead of uh, the disease becoming widespread and devastating in this province. And finally, L233P holds the largest market share for the fourth consecutive year, but uh, market share amongst other varieties did shift fairly substantially. Growing conditions in June, we began the month with a heat wave and a heat canker scenario in uh, many canola fields. It was hot across the prairies. Uh, certainly, we saw this effect most damaging to canola that was just at that sensitive stage or just about to emerge, uh, especially where canola was seeded at depth to reach moisture and struggled when searingly hot air moved into those top few millimeters of soil, burning new growth, as in picture, and causing cankering in slightly larger plants that were already emerged. A sporadic rainfall was limited in quantity and there was very few substantial rains, meaning that the drought stress expanded in the area, marking a large part of central and southern Saskatchewan as a moderate to severe drought. Northern Alberta, uh, northwestern Alberta in particular, and the Peace region were still considered abnormally dry, but definitely had more moisture than much of the rest of the prairies. Moving into July, we saw a continual below normal rainfall uh, and really expanding the drought from a moderate to a severe or even extreme drought in many cases. And successive heat waves took their toll on blooming canola. There was substantial heat blast and pot abortion in many canola fields across the province uh, and, and all provinces as far as that goes. And we're seeing uh, many pale yellow flowers and pods that started to form or failed to complete or became a lot smaller than they would otherwise. In extreme cases where there was a lack of moisture, plants simply went dormant and stopped going into reproductive mode and just stayed in that vegetative state uh, until we had rains later in August. By the end of the month, the yield potential was set and uh, there was no more additional bushels to be gained from having rain later in the year. The photo on the right I like to call the stages of grief. That was a photo taken from one of my own fields actually, but uh, it was certainly replicated across the prairies, particularly where uh, rainfall was less frequent or, or extremely variable and it came in short spells with intense rainfall. Those were all pulled out of the field on the same day and we were seeing very different stages of plant. Plants that were vegetative and dormant now had some water uh, from those late August, early September rains, putting on some new reproductive growth, trying to flower again, or they were trying to bolt and um, regrow from the base while the uh, primary dormancy was lost, or the apical dominance was lost from the top of those plants. Regrowth was severe by mid-September in, in many reblooming fields for fields that hadn't been desiccated and cut early, and we were starting to see some fairly significant late grasshopper flea beetle damage in some regions together with uh, fairly substantial powdery mildew if uh, crops were swathed or cut later. In terms of fall regrowth, uh, it was definitely worse where the yields were poorer and you had more than two inches of rain. At least that was the, the magic number as you moved a little bit further east. Uh, I can't say as much for Alberta. There was substantial nutrient piracy from some of the crop regrowth. Uh, the crop in the picture there uh, is shown at uh, early October, as actually, and that crop was never harvested for grain in the first place. So some of those really poor crops across the prairies were actually left in the field. There weren't that many, I mean, given the price of canola, farmers were doing everything in their power to uh, take that crop off and put it in the bin. But right now we're hearing stories of uh, crop and canola reheating in the bin just due to the amount of green material and green stem material that was cut off and brought in with the combine. So in the picture there and, and on many of the poor canola fields, given the lack of forage supplies and forage availability for livestock, um, many farms were considering bailing up uh, canola straw, canola forage, and silage or green feed uh, to feed to uh, skinny cattle. And we were seeing uh, nutrient piracy from high residual in the soils 
that could potentially affect next year's crop if those regrowth stands weren't managed correctly. So stand of the picture had about uh, two metric tons of biomass per acre that was taking out a, an equivalent of 160 pounds of N, 30 pounds of phosphate, 130 pounds of uh, potash, and 40 pounds of sulfur from the soil. Granted, much of that will return to the soil with uh, time and water should be reconverted into plant available nutrient, um, but it will have an impact on in terms of next year's crop should that regrowth not have been controlled effectively. We did see the highest canola yields in Alberta and Manitoba, both in their respective northwest regions at approximately 35 and 42 bushel and acre average, while Saskatchewan saw their highest yield in the province come in the extreme southeast corners of that province at 27 bushel an acre. The lowest yields by region were in southern Alberta at 16 bushel an acre, west central Saskatchewan at 14 bushel an acre, and the interlake part of Manitoba at 18 bushels an acre. In some cases, those lowest yielding fields were uh, simply not harvested and either destroyed or the green crop was bailed off as green feed or silage. However, uh, if a farmer was able to access their field and, and thought it warranted harvesting, uh, they did try and take as much off as they could despite really low yields and, and having to rely on crop insurance or self-insurance in some cases, um, just trying to take advantage of whatever the, the commodity pricing was doing or to fill up um, commodities or canola contracts that were already sold. Uh, the GIF on your screen now, or GIF as some might like to say, uh, it runs from April through the end of September. So just as a highlight of the Canadian drought monitor impact of the abnormally dry to exceptional drought conditions experienced across the prairies this year. Spring started abnormally dry in Alberta and Saskatchewan and severe to extremely dry in Manitoba. Moving forward, some rains into June, together with generally lower crop water demand, kept the status quo for some time. But come July, the lack of substantial rain became critical and those yield losses were locked in. Uh, together with extreme heat, uh, limited yield potential and solidified those. Wide open weather in August meant that uh, harvest was relatively quick to start, but became difficult later in the year as we had some substantial rains towards the end of August and in September, in some cases eclipsing the monthly average, making it seem like we had a relatively normal year on paper, but in fact that rain did not fall during those critical growing uh, condition seasons in um, May, June, and early July, rather they fell into late August and September, not impacting our drought uh, stress at all, and in fact, making harvest conditions worse. Some of that uh, regrowth canola tended to flower and where it became dormant and didn't flower in the first place, it now tried to reflower, set seed, and set green pods. So there was quite a number of uh, canola farmers waiting to decide when to desiccate exactly, given that they had like I said, many stages of grief within their canola crop, figuring out when might be the appropriate time to maximize harvest of already ripe seed as well as green seed that was just firming up prior to a frost. Looking forward for canola, um, definitely some changes up in the air this year. We've never experienced a year with as high commodity prices as we have going into winter and spring 2022. Uh, high input costs, particularly for fertilizer, could mean that intended canola acres might be affected if they wasn't already booked. On the incentive side, we'll see that strong commodity prices are driving interest in canola. And canola seed, uh, from many conversations with retails across the prairie, seems to be relatively stable compared to other input costs. While other, or other costs, uh, glyphosate and glufosinate in particular, together with fertilizer, are driving a disincentive to growing canola and may be switched into lower input crops um, pulses. Particular. Overall, what I'm predicting is that uh, we're going to see relatively stable canola acres with a, perhaps some slight regional variations, uh, perhaps a small decrease in Alberta and a small increase in Manitoba, given the, the opposite reflection of what happened in those provinces this year, with Saskatchewan staying relatively flat. With that, that's all I have for the oilseed update for the prairies, and um, my colleagues will address other issues with uh, environmental conditions and disease through our disease survey. Thank you all for having me.